This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. Hey guys, it's the awesome chat, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the uh, Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. This is the show where we talk uh, tech, uh, people doing awesome things in the area, entrepreneurs, uh, people making things, podcasters, all kinds of, of all kinds of, of makers and and business people in the Pittsburgh area and beyond. You can check out everything at awesomecast.net. Subscribe to the Awesome Chat or the Awesome Cast and check out the uh, lineup of past interviews. Been at this for about a year and we got a lot of great people that we've talked to over that time today we're getting into video games uh and one of one of uh two parters so so definitely uh look 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 up this guy's name uh for for uh some technology recycling we're going to talk to him about as well but james Deegan is joining us from the other end of pittsburgh actually at uh the e360 uh 8-bit evolution uh massive uh palatial headquarters there how you doing today i'm doing pretty good Awesome. Can't complain. Awesome. Well, so, um, like I say, we're going to talk 8-Bit Evolution today. Um, you guys, even that, you have a lot of, you have your fingers in a lot of things there. Can you explain what 8-Bit Evolution is to us? So, we breathe new life into old game consoles. So, it's both refurbishment and resale and improvement for older consoles to make them uh, kind of still stay relevant. <laughs> and then we make new games. So a big part of our model, even though we do release them, iOS, Android, Steam, and we're also official Nintendo devs, is we make each game to one legacy hardware console. So new games for the NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Game Boy Advance. So we have a big batch coming out for this year. This will be the most titles we ever released Mm -hmm. uh, in one calendar year. But uh, for a long time, it was, I think it's happened a lot with indie devs. Uh, They start a project and... You know, bringing it those last like top five, ten percent are really what matters. And this is the first time we've had enough time and resources to really invest in finishing and polishing products that we're proud to put our name on. So we have a really cool batch of stuff coming out in the next two weeks and over the next like four months. And and and, and of course, like I said, you, you guys are kind of touched on a little bit of everything there with this. Uh, can you tell me? I know we've had a few discussions here uh, in our meetings here over the last couple of months. Um, you, you you told me about tell me about some of your early history with uh, like like Game Boy cart uh, Game Boy uh, 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 rebuilds and and everything like that that you guys yeah. kind of really kind of popularized. So we started with Game Boy Advance consoles, and it's absolutely what we were known for for a long time. So we would take some of the older Game Boy Advance consoles and do the LCD backlight upgrade. And we had a few resident artists that would customize the shelves. I actually have one on my desk. I, I really didn't plan this, but uh, <laughs> there, here's one here. This is one of the first designs we had, if you can tell. And instead of just refurbishing them, a little dusty there, but instead of, instead of just refurbishing them, we'd uh, upgrade them with, you know, Gorilla Glass screens, uh, you know, very bright, vibrant black uh, backlights. Mm-hmm. So you can really see the difference for these if you pair them next to an unmodified Game Boy Advance, which either required the exact right amount of sunlight at the right angle or one of those plug-in worm lights, if you remember those from like the, you know, even early 2000s. But, uh, you know, I think that the Game Boy Advance has the best physical form factor. It's a great library and it also, you know, plays backwards compatibly with, all the Game Boy Color, original Game Boy stuff. One of the unique things about Game Boy consoles that I always like too is they're, they're region free. So Game Boy Advance and down, you could play and buy games from Japan, you know, uh, Europe, and they just plug and play, no modifications needed. So we initially became known for not just rebuilding or repairing the Game Boy Advances, but upgrading them and make them better than they were before. So as our uh, generation that grew up with these consoles got older, you know, it's kind of like a nice way to breathe new life maybe into your childhood Game Boy Advance, put some new parts, keep it current. You know, if you would look up our company name on YouTube, you'll find some videos of people like licking them because they love them or bragging about the battery life or, you know, if I'm ever on a flight, I always bring one with me because it's, you know, a good downtime for an adult to actually play a game once in a while. <laughs> and uh, people around me always want to know what it is, where we got them. 
So that was our, our backbone for, for a while. And eventually the supply chain became harder and harder to manage and harder and harder to keep on top of. Because, you know, like we had discussed, I can't really just call Nintendo and order like 2,000 Game Boy Advances these days. <laughs> so um, we've been focusing since then on really, you know, establishing the identity we started with of breathing new life into that retro hardware that we love. And it's everything from couch co-op, being in the room with your friends, you know, smack talking, having a good time to, you know, all that industry, uh, you know, vibrance of pixel art coming back too has been very timely for us. So uh, we're pretty excited about some of the, the new things we have coming out. We've really like uh, found a way to push the old hardware to new limits. So we have our own custom PCB boards, own shelves, and we focus on a really nice, robust kind of inbox experience. So I know we have some followers that just purchase them because of the cool collectible nature of it. They don't even have a Nintendo. They like have them on their shelves. <laughs> so That's awesome. I think that gives you a bullet point version of, of what we do. But I always tell everybody that if they take a moment to stop down or come to one of the conventions we're at, they may not enter a retro game fan, but they usually leave one. <laughs> Of course, and 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 we, uh, you know, I know we talked about you mentioned a little bit about supply chain. Of course, you're also involved with. Uh, you're probably the closest thing to a serial entrepreneur that I know, uh, as many things <laughs> that you have your fingers into right now, right? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I started off as just diversifying what we're working on and mm-hmm. add in a little bit of, uh, I guess, ADD, and next thing you know, <laughs> but yeah, they do work fairly well. Uh, in tandem with one another. So with E360, it's end of life IT assets. Mm -hmm. And with consumer collection events, they do get, you know, some amount, not much, you know, makes up certainly less than a half of a percent of what is collected or probably the like national body for receiving these. If there is one, you know, we have all the downstream due diligence part set up, which, you know, gives us all the, you know, certifying bodies will sign off and say everything that we have, they receive, nothing ends up in a landfill. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that, that gives us an opportunity to be able to purchase them in a scalable fashion from anybody that would receive them in the U.S., whether they're a cell phone recycler or or somebody doing community events. So we receive a ton of game consoles, of every iteration, make, model, and condition. We've seen Nintendos come in with nothing left but a couple plugs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we do everything we can to put them back into use and keep them out there. I, I love that it's uh, it, we'll talk a little bit more about E360 uh, in particular, because I think that by itself is is a really interesting concept, especially these days with recycling and what happens to these things. And, and, and it's really cool what you guys are doing there. But but it's nice. It's cool that you kind of have this weird kind of side sliver of that business <laughs> that that funnels right into this 8-bit evolution. Yeah. Uh, 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 and I know you've talked about this is more of the passion business for you. Big time. I mean, I don't think anybody can start uh, any startup company without having passion for whatever the objective is, you know, but with 8-Bit specific team is very tight. I mean, you need a certain character type to work for a startup and definitely another character type to work for a startup that's retro video game related. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, you know, it's a, it's definitely the most fun I have in my week whenever we're going through that stuff. But you know, like any any work part, there's work parts of it. You know, sometimes it gets a little monotonous, you know, cleaning and refurbishing, you know, 100 Nintendo consoles. But if you really <laughs> love them and you're dedicated to Mario, you got to do his work. Do, yes, to to Lord Mario. <laughs> yes, exactly. And not the one uh, not the one with the Stanley Cup when we say that. Um, and, and this is if, if you're you're curious out there, these are these are out there. There are, are definitely videos out there of look up Ape and Evolution Game Boy Advance. Uh, here's a uh, lazy game reviews talking about uh, the work that you've you've done over here. Um, and hey, look, his background actually looks kind of like uh, kind of like a little bit of uh, uh, your office over there with uh, the stacks of consoles and everything. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I mean, you know, the followers are the same. We travel to above 50 conventions each year, mm-hmm. you know, so we, we definitely know our core audience very well, <clears throat> which helps a lot with any any small business, you know. But uh, as we've we scaled popularity-wise and we've got more and more followers, you know, it, it's been something that we can really look forward to, you know, expanding and growing. And that, that's really what 2016 was supposed to be about for us. 
Awesome, awesome. And, and of course, um, uh, and, say, and then you guys are getting into or have been into uh, making 8-bit games. It's a big, you know, you kind of shifted from that. How, why did you go from like, you know, making these these physical consoles to deciding we want to uh, make the games themselves that, that go into these things? Well, uh, part of it is a product-based business takes a lot more space, uh, a lot more, you know, liability, a lot more of a cash flow challenge. And the second part of it is we have some incredibly talented software developers that work for us full time. And, you know, as a, a lifelong video game fan, I think all of them feel the same. It's infectious uh, and hard not to walk by the APID area of the warehouse and not want to get sucked in. So it starts off with hobbyist projects that are for fun. And, you know, next thing you know, it's, uh, you know, we have company game night every week. You saw the arcade and the pinball machines up front. So there have been many arguments have been handled by four player NBA jam. You know, so it's easy to want to want to dig into that stuff when it's so close to what we're interacting with. So that's how it started. And, you know, we've expanded quite a bit since then. We have a retro gaming scholarship that we offer. This would be our fourth round for that. So we have two interns right now that are actively working with full-time remote internships and they'll get, you know, monthly stipends and they get revenue sharing on any product they participate with. Most of them are working more in a, we'll call it like a compartmentalized, you know, piece of the team. But, you know, we have a really great, like set up, we've really come together to get the inbound supply chain pieces and manufacturing's down. And we have an incredible team about, about half of our, team members for 8-Bit don't actually live in Pittsburgh. In fact, our lead developer that's in-house, Kim, is matched by our other lead team lead, uh, Lowry, who's in Sweden. So, <laughs> you know, there's a little bit of like a constant agile, figure out how technology can assist that to work. But it works great with Slack and Google Drive and everything else. Where I probably see we're even more efficient that way than if we were all in the same building. Awesome, awesome, and of course, you know, you guys are, are are doing some interesting things. You mentioned the scholarship. You, I know we had you on uh, for I think it was germ squashers uh, when you were doing the stuff around the uh, I believe the children's hospital around here uh, when you were on Awesome Cast. Uh, you know, you know, there's extra life. We do talk to you plays, of course, here with Sorgatron Media. Uh, what rolled you into the security side, or um, that's, uh, the charity side of things? Yeah, so the Games of Fundraiser is something we've been exploring the last year. Mm-hmm. So we raised, you know, just the first disbursement alone for children was about $5,000. So, you know, if you can find a way to do a good thing while doing something you want to do, it's an easy fit, right? So uh, I spent a lot of time in the children's hospital whenever I was a kid. So I've always wanted to find a, an easy, accessible way to give back that did make a difference. And yeah, you know, I think that any nonprofit, whether they're huge, like Children's Hospital or micro size, there's always a need for funding. And as one, you know, Pittsburgh-based tech company to a Pittsburgh-based nonprofit in need that's close proximity to one another, it, you know, there's so much research and R and D and emphasis right now in gaming for health and gaming to, you know, reduce pain for children going through certain treatment programs or terminally ill. You know, one of our our lead developer. Uh, works very closely with Andrew. He's our lead designer. You briefly met him uh, either today or last time he was here. And Andrew's mom's a nurse, and he's had some great kind of heartwarming experiences talking to some of the kids who played germ squashers prior to you know getting their vaccinations or whatever it would be. And you know, it, there really is an immediate impact that translates when you gamify something that the kids can relate to. It's simple, and as Pixel arts come back and the, you know, the simple kind of two people in the same room, you know, fun action gaming has moved. Uh, it's clicked really well for us. I mean, germ squashers can be fun for, you know, a 30 year old like me or a, a six year old. because It's easy to play. It's addictive. It's scalable. It's those arcade style, you know, keep doing them until they get hard and you die kind of games really never go out of style. Certainly. All right. Well, what else? Uh, what else? Uh, uh, you know, eight bit game wise, uh, should people watch out for? I know you said you're you're on multiple platforms we have, with these. We have things. like four really cool capstone titles that we'll be pushing out in the next three months. So one of them is very close to being finished, and it's Viking Democracy. So it'll be the first uh, very large file size, very complex three player fighting game for the Sega Genesis. And we will, you know, release it on Steam too. Um, we have Zombros, going to be part of our zombie pack. 
So Zombros is an action platformer. Uh, the easiest way to really get into Zombros is to see some of the early footage, which we're going to have you know everything updated by end of week. Right now we're ramping up for E3, so the website's under a little bit of construction. But and the other game that we're really excited about is actually for a local company. It's Coffee Crisis, so we're making it with Black Forge Coffee, mm-hmm. and it's a Streets of Rage, you know, uh, final fight beat 'em up style game. <clears throat> where you're playing as the owners of the copy shop, Nick and Ashley, and aliens have come to the earth to try to steal all things that are caffeinated and metal. So <laughs> it's been a lot of fun to work with them on the game. It's fun to see yourself in a game. It's even more fun to find other kind of video game enthusiasts and get them excited about something like that, that both are going to be a cool playable piece for their shop and a way for us to test the model of making more games for companies. Cause some of the games we've made the last year never got an official Aether released. They were things that we were consigned to make for, you know, companies that won something at an expo to create a little more stickiness when someone's walking through a convention hall or, you know, games for uh, mobile games for people to play for advertising. You know, so we're, we're do- we've always done stuff like that, try to find a way to pay the bills along the way. But we have enough, you know, kind of bases covered as a growing, scaling entity that we can invest more in our own IPs. So that, that's what we're most excited about this year is taking some of our concepts that we've been touching on and off the last two or three years and pushing them forward and bringing them out to the world beyond our core niche market. Awesome, awesome. 8-Bit Evolution, uh, really, really die hard into the 8-Bit, making you dust off that old Sega Genesis and uh, and uh, get some some uh, new life out of it. It's great. The, ho- the homebrewing, uh, well, before I let you go, actually, the, tell me about um, the homebrewing community. Like, you know, this is something I've read about, never really kind of opened up my Wii to, to check things out or, or anything like that. I know, I know there were people still putting out games on these old cartridges. Um, yeah. but I never knew anything like the scale that I've seen at, at your office. You were showing me like some of the interesting things you guys are doing with the cartridges and everything like that. Uh, you know, this, and it seems like it's kind of a, for a new game developer, it seems kind of accessible as far as starting to develop something can you talk a little bit about that so uh, and there are c compilers Mm -hmm. you know which uh the traditionally most of the nes development was done in assembly which is uh, a little bit of a beast to learn slower onboarding a little more complicated you know longer timeline to develop but uh, c compilers are great there seems to be more nes homebrew specifically now than ever in fact there have been two really successful kickstarter campaigns just in the last two months uh, you know, so I think a lot of people, it's both the retro nostalgia kind of piece of it, you know, and it's also just, <laughs> there's something very cool uh, of going back to the basics and having a tangible, complete asset in hands, you know, instead of just a digital download code, as things keep moving to the cloud, you know, there's something just very unique about holding something uh, that, that, that this whole detailed, you know, feel it visceral response, you know, we have a really incredible open box experience embossed you know foil tops you will open up the manuals which i think is a lost art uh, and you'll find how much attention to detail we put into the writing you know the pack ins with germ squashers we did a you know branded hand sanitizer for the limited edition <laughs> a nice acrylic kind of stand and display to put the cartridge up as a trophy there's a you know a, a notepad similar to like a, a doctor's notepad style instruction manual going through you know everything from basic and troubleshooting to game tips and notes so all, all the stuff that we enjoyed whenever we were kids opening up the games on the way home from hills we're able to bring back and and, and re- redo at a higher level with now it's with 30 years of gaming experience to see what we would want to receive so a, a good quality control, control check is would i buy it if i was a consumer and there isn't anything that we have coming out that i wouldn't jump and buy right away <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Really hitting into that, that enthusiast market. I love it. Well, they have a lot of cool stuff coming out. They got a lot of cool stuff out there. Like I said, just look up 8-Bit Evolution and, and Game Boy Advances on uh, YouTube. There's a lot out there of people talking about their products and it looks like very, very, very positive about all this. And the, the one I'm hearing about your rabbit fan base is, is incredible. And it's, it's awesome to see that, that happening out of here. Yeah, well, thanks. I mean, we really try to focus on the customer service first, even whenever it was just two of us starting, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but it's, uh, there's really no way to build a brand you believe in if you, you don't make your customers happy first. So that's always been 
something that's worked out favorably for us. And as the years have gone by more recently, I think we're really poised for, for a great push. Awesome. And I'll make sure I send you some cool copies of stuff, Mike, as we're, as we're ready to come down the pipeline here. Awesome. Everybody needs some new Sega and Nintendo stuff. Yes, I do. My friend just got a new Sega Genesis, one of those new ones you get at the dollar store with the takes the cartridge. Games, and, I'm yeah, like, yeah. and he's like, he's, he bought an old NHL cartridge. He's like, it kind of glitches after a while. I don't know if it's the console or not, or I got a bad cartridge. I was like, I'll hook you up. I'm going to bring a stack of Genesis cartridges that are sitting right <laughs> over here in the studio and be like, let's go. Uh, so, For sure. Uh, in fact, I walked in and, and you'll probably appreciate this. He's like, a magical thing is happening right now. I was like, what? But I was coming over to work on a, some documentary stuff. And he's like, both my sons are playing Golden Axe. <laughs> yeah, I love that, actually. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That happens all the time. One of the things I really wanted to capture at our video game convention was, you know, uh, parents like passing it down to their kids, you know, seeing where Mario came from and seeing back whenever Sonic was good still, you know, <laughs> so... I had somebody just the other day say, should I get my kid an Xbox? He's kind of asking for it. And I'm like, honestly, get him like an Apple TV or something, you know, like because yeah. it's it's, you know, again, it's got Sonic on it. It's got it's got like kind of lower end games there. Don't you don't have to worry about them getting Grand, Grand Theft Auto necessarily. Or at least you can block it or whatever. Yeah. And I think it's it's like most of the stuff I'm playing on an Apple TV is very arcade old school kind of yep. thing you saw my phone my, my my game screen is mostly sonic and arcade games right, right. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um but no i think that's really cool that you can do that and it kind of fit into maybe we're getting to that point where uh you know you're never going to listen to the radio past the 90s because there was never any good music afterwards maybe but maybe some of us uh old stodgy video game fans would say there was nothing good after the sega genesis that's all i'm going to play <laughs> <laughs> and you should yeah, too I mean, kids there's a big uh, community like that you'll find that a lot of the retro Retro gaming enthusiasts, they still buy and play new game consoles. I mean, mm -hmm. I just bought Doom a few weeks ago. I bought Overwatch, you know, but uh, what makes them different is they're more consumable. I'm more likely to play Doom, get through it, enjoy it, put it back on a shelf, but I'll be pulling Mario 3 out the rest of my life. <laughs> Why isn't that on my iPhone? Come on. Yeah, Come on, right, Nintendo. Exactly. <laughs> Get with it, Nintendo. You should be right next to my Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, and... what, whenever that Nintendo and X stuff comes out, I'm sure that'll be a big change for everybody. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks for joining me, 8bitevolution.com. And uh, and say, look look them up. Check them out on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, and you have a newsletter <laughs> as well, right? Yeah. And actually, if you look at the main page, there's a subscribe now at the bottom. And all of our kind of pre-release updates, coupon codes, all that stuff comes out. We're not very spammy. It's only once a month. So if you do have interest in keeping up to date and you don't want to have to set a reminder, subscribe on the main page and I'll be sure to include you with our next blast. Awesome. Check it out. I don't think I signed up, so I just did that right now. So uh, <laughs> go Perfect. check them out. Thanks a lot, James Deegan. Or joining us in uh, 8 bit uh, evolution on the Twitters. Make sure I got that right. And uh, and that's with the uh, uh, zeros for O's. Yeah, too. you know, whenever we uh, made it a few years ago, someone in Ukraine had taken the name we wanted. And then once, <laughs> you know, the whole thing of social media, once it's built, like it's so hard to transition. So we're just going with it. If you find us from our website, you'll be able to find the social media one click away. There you go. Or look for the logo. Uh, thanks so much. And then we're going to be talking with him again, of course, about the uh, E360 technology, some uh, cool stuff in e-recycling uh, that they're doing over there. I want to keep, get a, have a deep dive in that as well. Check out everything. If you don't want to miss that or anything else that we're doing, go to awesomecast.net. You can subscribe to this show, The Awesome Chat. Of course, over on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course, the awesome cast channels on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, please check out the Patreon on there for the main show and everything else going on. Is there somebody we should be talking to? Is there somebody awesome in Pittsburgh doing something cool? Hit us up at AwesomeCast on Twitter, on Facebook, and drop us a message, a DM, and uh, we'll look into it and see if we can get more people on the show. We want to keep this consistent and weekly and a lot of people coming in here, a lot of different faces, doing a lot of really different cool stuff so thank you so much james for joining me thanks for having me i appreciate it awesome he's been our awesome guest you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com